Hey everybody, so today we're going to be talking about data products. What are they? What aren't they? What are some lessons learned? And do you have a data product? <laughs> um, or are you using data products? Those are some of the topics that we're going to go over today and we are joined by a special guest. So if you are interested in any of those topics that are involving data products, make sure you stick around. Um, and my name is uh, Ashwin Naik. Uh, um, my experience is uh, building product, uh, particularly the software product for data, data analytics. And uh, I have had the opportunity to uh, lead and part of the uh, chief technology officer in the last two startups, where we had, an, uh, um, we built the product and scaled it and then sold this uh, to the acquirer. And then most recently I was with uh, uh, Tourist Bank and I left them a um, few weeks ago. And then here I am just uh, trying to share my experience and mm -hmm. uh, with the broader network. Oh, I love that. And, and thank you for coming on. I'm excited to talk about this. What is a data product? Everyone defines these a little differently. So yeah. how do you define these? It is actually a software layer uh, that is used by a non-technical persona mm -hmm. to get an answer uh, for their need. And, and I, I sort of emphasize certain points here is, is non-technical because it's primarily used by the business users mm -hmm. and they can, once it's available, they can use immediately to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, get an insight or find some business uh, answers for the things they're trying to achieve. You know, companies that even already have knowledge graphs or already have some semantics are now saying, huh, I guess I could use this for all the other data I have. And then I could... Mm -hmm. Easily feed it, e easily, easily. Yeah. Uh, that's what they think, <laughs> easily yeah. feed it to the LLM. And again, they have no idea what that means for the most part if they're not technical. Um, right. Feeding it to the LLM like it's a, like it's a little birdie. You can just feed it and it grows mm -hmm. into a big, nice eagle and it goes and flies and <laughs> things. Um, but yeah, oh my goodness. It is, it is a booming space right now. Um, yeah. And yeah, to your point, you know, how do you get the rest of the data in and, you know, now the importance on that. And I'm curious to, to get your take on this and the quality uh, and yeah. trustworthiness, not just quality. Like you can have good data quality and it's not yeah. trustworthy, right? It could be the wrong right. thing. Um, yeah. So what, what, how are you seeing that shape up? You don't call this data a, a product as a data product if it is doesn't have a trust, doesn't mm -hmm. have a govern. Mm -hmm. uh, it is not a govern and it's not secure. So none of these things really matters. Uh, it has to really go through all those layers and uh, it's are very much applicable to the data product as well, which is mm -hmm. number one, it has to have a uh, governance layer, like it needs to be governed who owns it who are all the owner, both mm -hmm. technical, business, and so on. And what are the uh, definition of certain metrics? Like that comes the semantic yeah. layer where you define it once and it is applicable across multiple data products. And then it goes through, make sure it's secure. Um, delivery as well as how it was prepared, mm -hmm. both. And, uh, and also like the other technical aspect of it, make sure it's scalable and so on. So... Without any of this, you don't lose or you don't build that trust angle to yeah. to the consumers to make sure. Uh, and they have to be, and it's not that you are convincing them. They're, it's right there, information when they are browsing your data product, all these informations, they are available at their fingertip. And then they make the decision. Yeah. So that's a very important point. Yeah. And, you know, it's th this this element of trust and quality and governance continues to, to show up in a lot of my conversations. Um, and, you know, it's it's one of those things where there there are now um, regulation. Well, I don't know if it's a regulation per se yet, but there are standards now that are coming out to mm -hmm. say, like, OK, how can you make data more fair, right? Fair principles. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you make this um, more transparent and how do you make sure that you can trust in what that data is? But then there's another mm -hmm. aspect of it, which is, you know, if you say Tom Cruise is 12 feet tall, that could be very data. It could follow all the data governance. It could like say, yeah. yep, all that data is structured correctly. It's still wrong, though. And, yes. you know, in an internal capacity, you know, that could be what's I love this one. What's what is the revenue of this product? 
And mm -hmm. if you were working in a um, global and multi, you know, network or multi customer kind of organization, depends on who you ask. Right. Yeah. And it depends on how they interpreted the data. And so I think there's like this other aspect that I keep trying to, to highlight, which is during that um, either the ETL, when you are grabbing that data and then, you know, yeah. adding, you know, what are, how are you munging it? How are you, um, you know, putting this table with that table and like all of that that goes into the final answer, mm -hmm. but also the queries, like when you're when you're developing these queries, well, why didn't you use that field versus that field, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's another area where semantics is is so incredibly yes. helpful because it's explainable. Yeah. It it yeah. adds that layer of oh yeah, this is where this came from, and oh yeah, this is yeah. why this was done this way. Um, that doesn't mean people fill it in, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is where governance has to really play a part. And there's some yeah. kind of teeth behind uh, the the data governance that you have, or no one really follows it, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but you know, these elements, you know, it's it's a it's a multifaceted problem and it's not as easy as easy as it used <laughs> to be, where you would say, Oh yeah, we have data governance and we, you know, we can we can uh we follow that these are the formats we use and you know, there's these these data checks and it's all good. It's like, but do you know where it came from? When was it last updated? Do you yeah. know how trustworthy the actual, you know, detail is that you're you're pulling mm -hmm. from that? Um how was that ETL done? Did you miss something or did you put two yeah. things together you shouldn't have? All of that is now coming to light because back to that LLM space, um, in the in the in the before times, right? Um, these things had impact, right? You would mm -hmm. see them in your reports, and you know, maybe there were bad decisions made on them and they would be caught and then corrected. The problem is with LLMs, you have no idea why that error is happening in the LLM. Mm -hmm. Right, that's kind of how the LLM works yeah. uh, with its blender of of networking uh, that it puts together um, under under the hood. So, how do you trace back the error yeah. to your data? <laughs> right, yeah. like you yes. know. But wh where do you see this? Like, what are some of the um, trials and tribulations that you've experienced in this? Just uh, keep the LLM. Uh, on the side for a second. Yeah, please <laughs> and, do. We all talk uh, about it too. Much. Yeah. <laughs> The, the problem of this problem scope that you talked about, semantic layer and uh, the supply chain, overall the data supply chain, whether it is being used by a report or sort of a final set of tables that support certain business process, or maybe in an API endpoint that in um, downstream application is consuming, the supply chain of the data, the traceability, it, mm -hmm. the the importance of that um, mm -hmm. is is far more critical and and you no organization I believe is will be successful if they are not thinking this one mm -hmm. holistically and uh, then they're adding one more endpoint um, such as LLM it's just bound to fail and it's bound to waste a lot of resources um, without thinking through this. Well, it might not fail. It, it might be uh, enough smoke and mirrors to get them by. But then when the <laughs> hallucinations get real gnarly real fast. That, yeah, I think that's what it is. I think the trouble will come a couple of months down the road yeah. for sure. So to, to your point, the supply chain traceability, you don't necessarily scale yeah. without a semantic layer, without yeah. the a structure um, that uh, both for the technical uh, data that's being uh, moving through the supply chain as well as your business uh, glossaries of it, right? Mm -hmm. And those glossaries and things needs to be defined, well-defined so that when a particular uh, data quality is executed, it is really, it knows wh how, what to read and how to execute certain mm -hmm. rules mm -hmm. and, and then provide that visibility as in a final sort of an output variables to uh, the, you know, the consumption tools. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think a lot of times when people think about semantic layer, they think about it as a data model. <laughs> well, and let but me it, ask, it's more than that. <laughs> let me ask you that. Um, so what does it mean? What does it act? Tell us, tell, tell us yeah. all, what does it mean? When you go to a buy a house, um, you have a, the builders would have a different model, right? And most people, usually don't buy the model as is, uh, they customize it. Mm -hmm. They customize based on 
certain color, certain mm-hmm. things, and and kitchen and gourmet kitchen, whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? Um, because if you just go in and live in there, you just that's not a living condition because you still have to install blinds and all other things. Um, the uh, you know connect the your utility and everything. So to me, semantic layer is the utility connection of mm-hmm. a house. Mm-hmm. Okay. That means uh, the when you are bringing in the data from different, multiple different systems and sources, you are connecting them through some sort of a transformation ETL layer. Mm-hmm. But that's still at the raw. I mean, that's still raw and transparent, but it's mm-hmm. not used quite used for uh, ready to be used by the business. Mm-hmm. So you you define that layer of logical layer, that semantic layer of your what is this data set or set of cables that's going to be used. What's the business and technical information about that? So the metadata business and technical information, the glossaries, the definitions, and all that. And then logical layer uh, connection, the relationship um, among all those uh, different uh, data entities. And uh, sort of, to me, that's sort of the utility. Now you have the yeah. utilities ready. You are, all the connections are in place. Now you are ready to live in that house, meaning you start to consume that through uh, BI reports, analytic mm-hmm. model, LLM, whatever it may mm-hmm. be. So that, to me, that sort of is the, I hope this analogy makes sense. It does, it does. <laughs> Without the utility that you just don't live in the house. <laughs> you know, I see, I think uh, the, the um, ontologies and the knowledge graph and things, it became more popular and it's going to be even more popular coming years, I believe. Yep. It's because the relationship and the uh, in your supply chain of the data is continue to increase, uh, you know, complexity, yeah. right? So the traceability of how to find when things break, <laughs> yeah. how quickly can you find without without that uh, structure, uh, you know, a semantic layer and then knowledge graph. You, you just yeah. spend hours and months to do that. Yeah. And I think that's becoming why it's becoming more and more important these days. Absolutely. Uh, and, and also the other thing that I'm seeing, uh, just to augment, um, is the the application layer on top of this, um, on you know, ontologies and LLM, right? Mm-hmm. Now, there are applications are being built that when you ask a questions to a LLM model, depending on how you are asking, and uh, the behind the scene, it is using some form of um, the knowledge graph Mm -hmm. and to give you the answer in a very, uh, you know, trusted way because you you find that answer better than just traditional um, what your LLM provides, but also the representing that information, that complex information in a very nice application layer. It's making things more adoption. I I, I believe that adoption is going to continue to increase. Yeah. So whereas if you think about a few years ago, you go to a knowledge graph, you literally query in that complex web. (laughs) It's very, I mean, it's just just not meant for the business users. And now it's going to be more of uh, bringing that complexity or solving that complexity through nice UI. And then I think that That'll really increase that up some. And I'm glad you're pointing this out because I I I never really put two and two together as far as that ease of access, you know, breaking down barriers. Like I I've talked about that on the channel before, and you know, I even have a whole video on like what what can you look at and learn from the um, you know huge adoption of you know ChatGPT. Um, yeah. I'll put that up above somewhere so people can see it, um, but. <laughs> I never really thought about it from a data product perspective that this is really mm-hmm. bringing this to the forefront. So where do you see, you know, this concept of data product going now that we have so, so much demolished a lot of the, yeah. the blockers to getting into the data? Last probably two years or so, uh, most of the prominent platform, data infrastructure software provider, um, have a little menu called data product in their tool. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't have it before, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I happen to be uh, working in this space, you know, I think I'm sure you are as well, for too long. <laughs> and now it's. I'm glad to see that there is a recognition of 
um, just bringing in the data, doing analytics is mm-hmm. just not enough. Bringing that mm-hmm. into, and then final output into, put that into data product menu in their, in their platform is becoming more and more. So I continue to, I believe I will see that. I've seen that in a couple of platforms that are mm-hmm. industry leading for sure, but um, I haven't seen in all other platforms. Mm-hmm. So I think that's going to increase. Mm-hmm. Um, the number two is when, um, when the business users are coming into consuming that, the, the persona-driven access policy is going to continue to increase because if you see most of the, those platform layer, it's primarily designed for technical users. Um, mm-hmm. And business users have a different tools on top of it, whether mm-hmm. the tools can be in a um, BI tool or an application, whatever it may be. They don't come directly to the platform layer to consume it. Yeah. But now they they will, will expect organizations to for them to create these specific roles. For marketing department, you go to the marketing data product sections to consume your um, marketing performance product, right? Mm-hmm. For financial regulatory, they would go to the regulatory space of the product to consume, let's say, as an example, um, one of the regulatory reports, FFIEC 009. For them. It's, it's in a sort of mm-hmm. financial report. So I think that's going to continue to increase. So what that means is really, the, I, I believe the way things are going um, more adoption would happen at the platform layer, mm-hmm. and uh, that, and then the more and more users would start to come in, and then this layer of, I would say, governance becomes not a f- um, afterthought. It's it will be embedded. Otherwise, the adoption is not going to happen. So that's sort well, of can't is, be a uh, product if you can't trust in it. Like exactly, your your earlier right. um, analogy with with like, okay, you know Amazon, you know what's going to happen. Um, it's that that. Um, meeting of expectations over and over again. And if you don't know yeah. what is happening with your data, you cannot reproduce right. that same report or that same experience that um, yeah. you were trying to, to emulate, you know, a second time to show somebody or to, you know, re- redo it the next month or whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's 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 that level of, of trust and yeah. tying it back to how do you get it done? <laughs> I mean, that's always yeah, the trial, a, right? It, it is a trial, um, but also I I believe uh, that um, it's part of the leadership as well yeah. in terms of, um, and then you, in a cultural change is a big part of it. If you are in the traditional yeah. data analytics space, you're delivering what business is asking you to do and you have so many people and your operations cost is much more higher. You don't transition to data product easily. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. as real as that. But if you start to dissect, why are you spending uh, so much of our operations cost? Uh, mm-hmm. You know, operations. Uh, why your operation cost is so high? Then you start to really think about how do you increase efficiency in your data supply chain. So then these things would become more meaningful. Yeah, and you know, it's I have had my fair share of projects like that. You know, you always get a lot of the pushback, like, well, the data meets my needs, so why do I need to govern it? It's being, you know, governed by the processes that we have, not realizing mm-hmm. that the rest of the company might want to use that too. Um, yeah. Or, you know, you have the, um, this is my data, and I'll touch my data. Don't <laughs> don't mess with my data. Don't tell me how I should be doing right. my data. Um, yeah. Or like the actual real logistical problem, which is, we have 20 years or more of data and it's mm-hmm. still used and we don't want to mess with those systems or those data elements or those schema or even the ETL processes because nobody knows how those work anymore. And if you touch them, they might break and we don't break, know, right? Yeah. Like all of that, there's that's that last one is the most real and mm-hmm. the most difficult to get around. Um, and if you do like a lift and shift, that's got its own issues. Um, so yeah, I mean, the struggle is real. <laughs> <laughs> the struggle is real. Um, but you know, the good thing is, um, I've seen a lot of applications in LLM to actually go through and help um, identify where you actually need data cleanup, 
how mm-hmm. to maybe automate it a little bit better. So again, it's it's um, you know giving more tools to the toolbox, so to speak, sure. to, to get the data product out. Yeah, and you know the other thing that I uh, just want to add here within the same tool set, what the organizations have, if you th- rethink about the supply chain and in a product construct, we talked about, I believe a lot of the things can be solved, meaning in terms of your efficiency, operational efficiency improvement, getting things faster, more trusted way, mm-hmm. um, without having to add a whole new set of tools. <laughs> mm-hmm. the, pro- the problem is a lot of, it's it's the, domain and, and the technical skill, mm-hmm. both on the data side and the product side, is required to make it happen. It's never a tool problem, though, mm-hmm. <laughs> in my opinion. It yeah. it's comes down to leadership and uh, the, the thinking uh, on the both side, product and data side, to make it happen. Um, so, yep. so I think that is existing investment can be leveraged in a better way. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's also like, can you get the funds to dedicate the time, right? Like the other problem Mm -hmm. is we always have these competing priorities. So unless something is burning down or it's really messing up some reports somewhere or there's complaints from customers of some sort, you know, it's it's very reactionary still. Yes. It's it's all about, well, what's the new cool now LLM thing that we can add to things? And then they go, hmm. To your point earlier, a few months from now, why is this not working right? That I, I thought this was magical. Why is it not magic? Yeah. Did you look at your data? Yeah, I didn't have time to do that. That's exactly well. right. <laughs> <laughs> do you know where that data came from? No. <laughs> why should I? The LLM figures that out for me. <laughs> That's right. 